Hello, I'm Peter Thompson, and I'm going to be talking about quality of service in networks. In this first part, I'll be focusing on how that relates to quality of experience in applications. In the next two parts, I'll be focusing on our unique solution called GOSS, and how that can be used to deliver guaranteed quality of service for multiple applications across next generation and broadband networks. So I'm going to talk about quality of service, uh, and how this relates to quality of experience of services delivered over IP networks. So, quality of service is actually quite a confusing term. It's widely used in the industry to mean different things by different people. Uh, it's quite hard to get a good grasp of what it means. Well, we'll try and do this in a minute. Quality of experience is perhaps a bit easier to understand. Um, nearly everyone has used some kind of network application, even if it's only a web browser and has some idea of the kind of variety of uh, response and experience that that can give, um, the difference between good days and bad days and, and how networks perform. So the goal here is quality of experience. It depends on a whole variety of factors, such as the uh, quality of the end device, the way that the audio is managed or the way the video is presented, um, cameras and, and stuff like that. There's a whole variety of factors in, in play there. But from an engineering perspective, it also depends on the quality of a distributed application. So different parts of the same process are running in different places and they're connected by a network. So the way that that behaves depends also on a number of factors. It depends on the performance of the servers that are involved. It depends on the performance of the client devices, which could be PCs or dedicated SIP phones or things of that kind. And these things are connected by a network, and so the overall quality of experience also depends on the performance of the network, which is con connecting these parts of the application together. So we could say quality of service supports quality of application, which supports, it to, in turn, quality of experience, which is really the goal. Let's try and answer this question of what is QoS. Quality of service is the capability of a network to reliably deliver acceptable performance for each application. And the problem here is that we have multiple applications all using the network at the same time, and the network has to do them all at the same time. So unlike the application layer where we can think about each one separately, we can engineer the server and the client software or the client appliance to do them with just that one application, for the network we have to try and do them all together. So reliability here is something like the five nines that we have in the tele telephony world, um, and acceptable is dependent on the application. So it's important to realize that it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, there is no one level of performance which is good for all applications. Each application has its own requirements. So voice, for example, needs something like less than 150 milliseconds end-to-end -end delay uh, in order to give a really good quality of experience to the user. And there are some published guidelines about this from organizations like the ITU. Now, we're talking here about next-generation networks, and this is a, a kind of um, widely used term Perhaps, again, not entirely clear what it means. So let's just think about um, old networks. What, where are we starting from? We come from a position of having multiple networks. Each one has been optimized for a specific application. And the classic example is the telephone network, which has evolved and uh, been constructed with a great deal of effort over 50 years or more uh, to give us this amazing capability to be able to phone um, pretty much anyone on the planet. But it's been optimized for that specific purpose. We also have a variety of networks which are involved in communicating data between computers, which are also built for that purpose. Now we're moving to a world where we have networks which are entirely packet-based and support multiple services. So we have a single general purpose network. And the big advantage of that is that it reduces costs. Just having one network to maintain is an enormously easier proposition for a service provider to manage or for an enterprise to manage um, and it, avo it avoids having costs sunk in multiple different networks, each of which only has one thing to do. So in these networks, all services are carried as streams of packets. And that has a couple of advantages. One is that it's very flexible, because all we have to do to add a new service to, is to put some more packets into the network. Um, we're not limited as to the kind of services we can run. At any time, we can say, let's add a new application supporting a new service, uh, and that can be done. It's also very efficient because uh, we can dedicate the transmission resources of the network to sending a packet for one service 
and as soon as that's been sent, they can immediately get on with sending a packet for another service. So we can uh, multiplex the services onto the network in such a way that we're making very efficient use of the underlying infrastructure. However, there are some limitations. This all sounds a bit too good to be true, in some ways it is. So, problems are really down to the fact that the network elements themselves all have finite capacities. And the obvious one uh, that a lot of uh, approaches to QoS function, focus on is the bandwidth from one point to another. But that's not the only limited function. The packets as they move across the network have to be stored temporarily before they're sent on. So we have a certain amount of buffering that can hold packets, and when that becomes full, packets have to be lost. We also can only send one packet at a time. Regardless of how fast a link is, we still can only send one packet, and so we have to cause other packets to wait. So we have a limited capacity to service packets, and that's another crucial resource, and that's involved in delay. The other problem is that packets are generally generated by uh, computers, by high-performance devices, and they can turn up at very high rates. So whereas in the world of telephony, the difference between uh, the average number of calls being made and the, the busy hour, the peak usage, was typically about 6 to 1, uh, in packet networks, the difference between the average and the peak can be something like 10,000 to 1 or more. So we have periods where bursts of packets arrive which can overload the limited resources we have, and this is what we call contention. So this will cause performance to vary. At times when we have more packets turning up than we can send, not all streams of packets can get the same performance they would have if the network was otherwise empty. So some, pack, some packet streams delivery will vary, um, and this is the thing we have to manage. The other important thing to understand about QoS is it's not something that we can add. Quality of service here is something that we only ever lose. So the things that typically happen are packets may get lost because buffers become full, and once a packet's been lost, there's no possibility to restore it later on. It can be resent by the end, but then it's a new packet. The original packet has still been lost. Similarly, once a packet's been delayed somewhere, we can never suddenly unwind that time. Um, so loss and delay accumulate as a packet goes across a network. But they don't accumulate uniformly. Quality is lost, really, at the most, where there's the most contention for resources. And typically the land wan boundary is one of the places where contention can be at the highest, and therefore one of the places where most quality is lost. Managing the loss of quality at the most severe contention points in the network can solve almost all of the end-to-end -end problem. So this is how we can apply uh, QoS techniques in a selective way uh, in order to give good performance for the whole network.